Hi, I'm Michael Peluso, and I'm a results leader. You're listening to ResultsLeader.fm. Being a thought leader is easy. Getting results is hard. This show is for the results leader who lives and dies by their results. Here is your host and chief results leader, Jonathan Rivera. Boom, boom, pow. You know what time it is. It's time for another results leader.fm. Welcome back. And I like to reward good behavior. That's what we do around here. We reward good behavior. So you're here, you're showing up, you're listening. That's good. And I've got a treat for you. I've got an amazing interview. Guy was diagnosed with ADD, turned his whole life around, got healthy, built multiple companies, is super successful. His name is Mr. Michael Peluso. Let's jump in. Michael, welcome to the show. Glad to have you. Are you ready to rock this thing? Yes. Super excited to be here. Man, let's give our listeners a quick win right now. What book have you given most as a gift? Oh, um, so one of my favorite books is How to Eat, Move, and Be Healthy by Paul Check. Uh, It changed my life because it gave me a a holistic perspective on health. And that's got to be the one that I've given most. One of my personal favorite, now that's in, in health. In business, it's got to be the E Myth. I love the E Myth, man. Incredible book, super impactful. It really, yeah, you know, like what I love about the E Myth is is that it changes your mindset to think about business from a system approach. And I think, like, when if we're talking about freedom, we're talking about getting results. You have to have freedom to think, and a freedom to think for me derives out of systems. And so that book changed me from working in my business to working on my business. Now it is time to tell a story, and it is our favorite kind of story because we're entrepreneurs, so we go through it all the time. Tell me a story of how an apparent failure set you up for later success. When I was five, I was diagnosed with ADHD. And um, when I grew up, they didn't really understand it the way that they do now. And, And so what happened was... I'm there. I'm young. I'm inside of this, inside of a world where it's not understood. Uh, people are giving, prescribing things like Ritalin and speed. And what happened was it prevented me from sleeping. And so now I'm taking medication that is an upper to fall asleep or to, to focus. Then at night, they're giving me sleeping pills to fall asleep. And it threw my whole cycle off. I experienced like failure after failure, after failure, after failure from like a feeling like like in inside of my world having conversations with these adult figures that made me feel like there was something wrong with me and so i i looked at that and i turned it around and i said okay you know like what is adhd and and what is executive function because adhd has been reclassified as something called executive function disorder and what i what i discovered was and is 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 that there is a sequential way that the brain accesses information and that i can if I look at each one of those sequences, uh, practice that on a regular basis, that became the framework that I later on and now teach at different events. And, and we call it now entrepreneurial function disorder. <laughs> but it's just, it's just you know, how your brain is accessing information under stress. And, and are we creating ideas? Are we forward thinking are we, uh, and creating an idea and living into that idea? Or are we living away from what the past has taught us, um, which can be very limiting. And I think we all go through and and a little bit of a spiritual or existential crisis somewhere along the way when we realize that our past says we shouldn't do anything. So what's the right thing to do? And and at that, in those moments, you have the opportunity to create a new vision. And uh, when you have a new vision, uh, you can then reverse engineer the actions to get there. So for me, being diagnosed with ADHD led me on a journey that has transformed my life it's transformed the lives of others, probably one of my greatest assets. When we're thinking about this, you're saying that at an early age, you got diagnosed. I mean, how long did it take you to start figuring out that you had to do something different than what they were prescribing you with the uppers and downers? I mean, how old were you and what did you dig into? So I think that, like the first impression is, hold on, wait a minute. You know, like there can't be something wrong with me. Like, to the, come on, guys, you know, I'm sitting there in class and they're like, you know, no, 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 you need to sit here and do this. And I'm like, yeah, but having conversations is so much more fun, you know? So I think that the, I think that the needing to find a workaround happened as soon as the diagnosis did, right? <laughs> um, and then that journey kind of, but there was this one moment that I will never forget. I'm sitting there, I'm in Jamaica, I'm probably 22 years old. 
I want to say I'm about 22 years old and I'm hanging out with a friend of mine and I'm sitting in a Burger King. I just kind of realized in a moment there that if I don't design my entire life around being healthy and overcoming crap for better length, no other, my way of being in the world that's preventing my own accomplishment of what I want to accomplish, then I'm never going to accomplish what I want. And so in that moment, I decided two things. One, that I was going to put myself full-blown into healthy lifestyle living. And I have Arnold Schwarzenegger's encyclopedia of bodybuilding that I was reading at the time that kind of spurred that. And two, that I was never going to eat fast food again. And, uh, and that was the last time I ate fast food in that Burger King in, uh, in a grill. So some of you guys may recognize that, but never had it again. And since then, I've been making decisions like that. You know, what do I want my future to look like? How can I align myself with that vision? And then what am I going to eliminate? You know, one of the things that one of my favorite quotes is one by Michelangelo. And it's said that when Michelangelo was asked how he created David, he said, I took a piece of marble and removed what wasn't David. And every person that's listening to this right now is a unique individual. You, there's no one else like you in the whole world. And so the goal is not to get you into an existing system. The goal is to remove what doesn't work for you so that your natural light shines through, just like Michelangelo. So that began my journey. And along the way, I kind of, did, so that, I guess that's a good place to leave it. <laughs> you know? That was that was powerful, bro. That was powerful. I, I was I was ready. I was ready to go on the ride. <laughs> yeah. Well, well yeah. and I'll share. So that that quote, and then there's there's this one by Joseph Campbell, which is most people are seeking the meaning of life when what they're really looking for is the experience of being alive, which is like a right now phenomenon. It means no matter where you are, if like right now you have access to the holy grail of all of experience, which is the experience of being alive. And you have access to it. So, so that grounded faith in that presence of right now, that became my David. And uh, I got to tell you, it's transformed my life because I'm, not, I'm, I'm grounded in who I am versus trying to put myself into some other system. Um, and it's definitive in decision making. Uh, it's, it helps in relationships. Uh, it's just a really, really, really powerful tool. It is a very much a faith but not one, not an external faith where there's this codependency, where, but it's an inward experience, the same way that you feel gratitude. You know, it's, it's a presence. So I, I guess that would be the best description of it, you know? And let me ask you, what is the most worthwhile investment that you have ever made? Earplugs. <laughs> when hanging with my Earplugs. wife. Earplugs. No. I got it, I got it. No, no um, no, so uh, so most worthwhile investment I have ever made is definitely definitely in the people that are in my business. So I believe that most entrepreneurs have people on the wrong side of the spreadsheet. They look at their employees like expenses, and um, to me, it's the greatest asset. So I really believe in investing in people and training them and spending time with people. So the most worthwhile investment that I've ever made has been with people. If you wanted something tangible, I would say it would be my wedding ring. <laughs> that, 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 ha- that investment has paid uh, oh, dividends <laughs> and continues to. Um, I, have, I have three beautiful children to thank for that. And, uh, but seriously, earplugs, man. What I love about earplugs is when I put those puppies in, I just meditate, tune out the world. And it just, there's something it's, uh, you know. I think I'm doing the same thing that my son does when he's reaching for his mom, you know, but, but, uh, but yeah, earplugs are something about those things and being able to travel with them and being able to pop them in and tune out the world and go back to that space that we're remember that space. That's always there of, uh, who I am. And, and that, that, that was little earplugs pay dividends. All right. Think back over the last five years, what new belief behavior or habit has most improved your life? All right. Love this question, by the way. Uh, so for me, uh, is this habit that I call uh, navigation calibration, right? So navigation calibration, and, and it's a mindset habit. And earlier we were talking about executive function and our ability to increase and improve executive function. And this is how I do it. So once a week, I sit down and I schedule two hours. Now, it's, sometimes it's a little bit more, sometimes it's a little bit less. The point is not to keep it within a time frame. The point is for this habit to show up on your calendar, right? And what the habit is, is the habit is 
time mastery. So most people are not scheduling time to master time. And so you never actually look and analyze your own ability to quantify time, to set an intention and put something on the calendar and then to execute on it. So this is my opportunity where I sit down. I, I, what I do is I clean my office. I sit down. I get everything out on my head that I need to on a piece of paper and, uh, and drop into a state of gratitude. Right. So what we've done is we've set an intention, we've cleared everything out, and we're now internally changing our emotional state. From that state of gratitude, I ask myself a question. And that question accesses the folders of my subconscious mind. It starts creating a vision. It starts creating an alignment uh, with a future. And so my question could be like, you know, sometimes if I'm not if I'm feeling like I'm having a hard time getting to gratitude, I just ask myself, like, man, what, what, am, what am I grateful for? You know, and, and then I let go of the idea of efforting things and that emotion shows up, right? And so right now, if everyone's listening, it's like, when we, it's like, what does it feel like to feel amazing? What were you doing the last time you felt really amazing? And if you were, it, you know, the brain runs on language. And if you question yourself properly, the subconscious mind is going to give you that result. You know, the greatest goal achieving machine on earth is between your ears. So that access is a, an internal state. And then from that internal state, i ask myself, like, what matters to me? What's essential for me to accomplish this week? And I allow myself to kind of vision it a little bit. And so then from that heightened state of gratitude and a, and a clear vision, I go and I pull up an agenda. And, and my agenda is all those hard commitments that I've committed to. It's me giving my word to something. I look at things, you know, I, I have all kinds of stuff on my agenda, weight loss goals or weight gain goals. I have uh, relationship goals with my wife. I it's just a place for me to keep everything so that now when I'm scheduling my time, I'm not just thinking about my larger vision. I'm also thinking about the commitments that I've made in my life and falling into alignment with them. And, and I've found, you know, I, I, I've found that the brain is at conflict when it's got conflicted agreements. So at first, this can be a, a very interesting experience because you're becoming aware of the places in your life where you've given your word to accomplish something that's at conflict. I told my wife I was going to be home at seven o'clock uh, and then a big project lands on your desk. Which one are you going to honor? All of a sudden you're stressed out. So this gives me an opportunity to choose way before that happens. And so once I'm done, I've got myself into alignment. I schedule my week, so maybe two, three weeks sometimes in advance, but I schedule myself. And um, and that scheduling process, blocking it out and seeing it in 3D allows me to better understand when I'm doing what. But it also allows for me to set a powerful intention and visualize it and look and say, am I accomplishing what I want to accomplish? Am I spreading myself too thin? Uh, and then I get to run the play. And the next week I look, I'm there and I look back and I say, well, what worked and what didn't work? What do I need to eliminate? Like, like we were saying, you know, what do I need to cut out of my life? Like David, what do I want to allow to take its place? And so that regular habit has transformed my life and it's transformed the lives of the people that I've shared it with that go through it. And probably one of the most valuable assets that, um, and, and, and on top of it, what it did was it changed the way that I think, because now I'm continually and perpetually thinking about what I'm going to be doing and, and what's great about the future. What am, what am I going to be doing? And what's great about that is it's unwritten. I'm no longer thinking about what I already did and how I can try to make something in the past better because I can do anything that I want in the future. I can create any, I can, oh, that, that's a creative canvas. And that transition, and this doesn't happen overnight, but that transition pays dividends, you know? But at first, like I was saying, you know, you sit down there, you, you schedule yourself, you sit down and you're like, what am I doing? How am I supposed to, you know, it's a shift from a reactive living to intentional living. Now we're about to get into your favorite part of the show where we talk about results. But first, I've got to ask you, are you picking up what we're laying down here? I hope so. That's why we do the show every week. And I want to ask you for a little bit of help. If there's someone out there that you think can benefit from this show, why not share it with them? Put it out there. Hit the share button. Use hashtag results leader FM and get it out there. Now let's jump back into the interview. Let's talk about results. Why do results matter, Michael? So results matter because for me, results are like a game. What do we want to measure and, and are we accomplishing it? So for me, results are, are a great way of keeping score. You know, how are we going to keep score? What's the game that we're playing and how are we keeping score? And I think results 
matter because it, it brings you one step closer to what it is that you want to accomplish. And I think a good result is one that is transparent. It's one that is collaborative. It's one that it's one that's bigger than the individual. And I think the you know results matter because that's the ball in the net. In the last five years, what new realization has helped you get better results for your clients? Well, I definitely feel that I shared a little of that in the last previous couple of questions ago, but I would say that that's probably that realization. I mean, one of the realizations that's transformed my life and gotten my clients results is the power of questions. I mean, the the power of questions when I'm or when I have something or there's a situation where there's friction or I'm looking to accomplish something. If I'm able to get all the way down to what exactly is it that I'm struggling with, like in language, because thoughts, because beliefs are thoughts that we've agreed with, if I'm able to get all the way down to what is it that I'm struggling with, and I see it as language, I'm able to see both sides of it. And, and almost immediately, um, I'm able to break it down into something that's as easy as Google. <laughs> you know, I could just think Google it. So that to me has been a, a real needle mover, you know, language. What is the question that I'm struggling with? How do you figure that out? I mean, I, I hear you saying the power of questions and I get it and I like it. How do you know you're asking the right questions? Yeah, what is the right question? I think, great, Here, here's, the, here's the answer to that. The right question is the question in which the answer produces the result that you're looking for. Let's talk about you for a second. What area of your business would you like better results? Well, I'm always looking for creative, exciting, impactful projects, you know? So for me, you know, the area that I, the area that I'd love to be able to continue to focus on is meeting great people that are really changing the world, you know, like with what they're doing, you know, that there's sincere, genuine drive to live an impactful life. I know we know that I think money helps. But impact for me and seeing people's lives change. Um, I've got a friend right now, a client of mine, and he's right now overseas with with a humanitarian crisis that's going on. And that to me, man, watching him do that, that's the most powerful thing for me. So having more relationships like that in my life is is going to be you know, like that to me is that's the hunt. You know, that's is this an impactful relationship? That's what I'd like to see more of, more impact. <laughs> what results are you most proud of, Michael? So I am, I've got a couple of different businesses, right? A consulting firm, I've got a software company, I've got a, a full service marketing agency. And our marketing agency um, is top 1% in the world. I mean, we've launched part of Verizon's website. We've worked with companies like Home Depot. We've worked with the United Nations on sustainable initiatives. So for me, I would definitely say uh, I would. De we're working in crypto. We're right now. We're launching a, a resort on the Las Vegas Strip. So I would say for me, the result that I'm most proud of is showing up inside of our CRM. And I can't take credit for this myself. This is a community thing, right? But showing up in my CRM and seeing the team members talking to each other and sending each other the gifts, like those little freaking like images, and they're laughing and stuff. To me, like that glows. That makes me glow. Because then I'm like, man, these guys are so cool. I got to get out there and share them with the world. And that to me is like, I'll tell you, and it's enough to make me want to cry. And I'm sorry. But like seeing those guys happy because they deserve to be happy, that is awesome. And it will wash away any of the bullshit that you're dealing with when you're out in the world, you know? So, and from an ego perspective, man, it's pretty cool to be able to rock and rock that last sentence there. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, yeah, dude, you know, we want, we, you know, our team is an award winning creatives. You know, we launched, uh, we launched Verizon's website. We've got, you know, I mean, that, that's some pretty cool, we do some pretty cool stuff. I definitely see one of the things that's really important to me, it, you know, is recognizing that. That, you know, when there's two sides of an argument, there's two sides of an argument. And when a third party shows up and becomes a bigger problem than that argument, all of a sudden people align. I believe that in the world, certain things will bring us forward united. And for me, that's technology. For me, that's feeding the hungry. For me, that's it. For me, it's sustainability. You know, these are things that span no matter who you are, 
at the bottom of who, no matter who you are, these are things that impact everyone. So for me, the results that I'm most proud of are bringing that forward and uniting people, working for a large enough vision that it doesn't matter what religion you are, it doesn't matter what color you are, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past, but we're headed in this direction. That's our vision. And um, so those, those, those excite me. And one, one more, but don't let me, wait, let me just, so our marketing agency is, it, it, there's, there's a total, I'm one of four siblings and there's three of us that are there. My sister is the CEO. I'm head of business development and my other sister is the creative director. Um, I am most proud of them. They are my, they, my sisters and siblings, they humble me because they are that creative and they're creating really cool stuff. They're on like the edge of stuff. So that, that to me, like, you know, why am I so excited about marketing and all this stuff? It's because when I'm out there sharing, I'm sharing the fruit of our family. Take it, man. What, uh, any parting thoughts you'd like to share with the results leaders who are listening to us right now? It doesn't, if you're struggling, it doesn't need to be that hard. You know, have faith in that it doesn't need to be that hard and that you can let go of the effort and just embody who you really are and that you will naturally migrate towards success because what you're holding on to when you're struggling and it isn't working is the idea that it should be a certain way. When you let go of that, you're going to find that you are headed in a direction that is way more expansive, way more impactful, way more creative, way cooler than you ever thought possible. And that is a cool experience. That's letting go of the struggle is like chipping away that Angelo. So that would be my parting thought, you know, that you're already perfect, whole and complete. And and when you remove every other idea other than that, and when you do, you're just going to naturally migrate towards success. So don't make it such an effort. <laughs> you're already there. I know that our listeners are going to want more from you. So where can they go? Come check us out. Come to uh, True Living Leaders dot com check us out over there um you'll be able to find me there probably the easiest that'd be great love to hear from everybody i'm excited to hear everyone's stories and journeys and what you guys are doing and, and always collaborate excellent excellent michael thank you so much for your time today totally enjoyed it i could have done a double with you here i had a had to really tame myself so thank you for that thank you for bringing the energy and the power to the show thank you results leaders for tuning in and we will be back in your earbuds next time that is a wrap for another edition of ResultsLeader.fm. If you are out there getting results for your clients and you want to be featured on the show, go to ResultsLeader.fm now and apply to be on the show. And if you love what you're hearing, share the show, give us a rating and review, do anything to help us get the message out there. Thought leadership is easy. But results leadership is hard. We'll catch you on the next one. This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com.